Welcome, traveler. You have entered the realm of adventure. Prepare yourself for tales from beyond the dice. Welcome back. We play role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and more. I am Luke, your dungeon master, and with me are your players, and they are... Ben, and I play Cortain, a mercenary equivalent of Santa Claus, giving <laughs> gifts and protecting the good and hunting down the wicked. Peter, I'm playing Spixen, and when Santa Claus's sleigh-mobile breaks down, you know who to call. <laughs> uh, Trav playing fan favourite Little Moss <laughs> A level 6 monk who kicks ass and takes names And puts people on naughty and nice lists And I'm Levi and I play Lokag, a uh, level 6 barbarian And he's just happy to have some friends to run around with It's just nice oh. And this is not a Christmas episode This is not Spoilers. a Christmas episode But by the time it's but, released But you it never be know damn close <laughs> Yeah, it could actually be after Christmas. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, it's been a little while since we've recorded the regular campaign story. So I'm not going to make your fellas roll D20 for me. I will recount the tale of what has happened previously on Beyond the Dice in New Etika. Our mercenaries, Little Moss, Lokag, Spigs, and Cortain were sent on a mission to find a drone that was shot down by Yun Tung, which are a criminal syndicate in Darkhaven in Azuma Kabatai, a section of Darkhaven, and snatch the the black box, the, the hard drive in which all of the data is recorded and saved in case of emergencies, like the drone being shot down by criminal criminal syndicates. So our mercenaries head over to a dry cleaner, and which is a known hotspot for Yuntung activity, for it is a, a side business of the syndicate. They head in there, bust a bunch of heads, kill a bunch of goons, uh, and... Spigs blasts his shotgun through a bunch of innocents as well. They find the corpse or the remains of the drone, but the black box is not there. They find an email that has been sent to the person who's been tasked to hack the black box and take the information out of it. And Proto, who works for the Swords of Darkhaven, Cortain's new organization, crime fighting organization, tracked it to various locations which are bouncing, bouncing off fake uh, IP addresses and locations around the city so they went back and forth all over Darkhaven and then finally made their way to the real location of this hacker's den the hacker uh, is named if I can find it properly where are we? Annexet so A-N-E-X-E-T Annexet they broke into the apartment where there were some VR junkies, commonly known as junkheads. They are connected into the network on the internet and sort of um, living in VR. They're addicted to uh, videos, internet ads, of all the flashing light colors and the sensations that are fed into your brain from the great networks out there in the internet. They didn't wake them. They bypassed them, making their way through the first apartment. Now, all of these three apartments were connected to each other uh, horizontally. And there were doorways that were pretty much just broken down drywall uh, between each apartment. As they made their way through the apartment, they bumped into a VR VR junkie girl who uh, was watering and spraying uh, succulents. Was it like an old lady? Nah, she was she was like a young girl. She was just a bit. She was high on something. Oh, okay. It's like those um, before and after portraits for drug <laughs> campaigns and stuff. She's, she's probably twenty, but she looks fifty. Yeah, it's just for plugging into the internet, basically, and being addicted to it, uh, and maybe other drugs. We don't know. Uh, she thought that she was still in VR and kind of got you guys 
um, misto- she mistook you guys um, for her friends and told you guys to go back to the front room and protect the apartments and you guys continued on ignoring her you made your way through the second apartment into the third where the hacker was sitting in a great leather sort of um, executive chair with this huge uh, bunch of desks and all of these screens uh, both sort of wide screens and CRT screens all piled and and, uh, connected together with sort of uh, monitor arms and all of these cables running down into the computer and then also from the roof in this massive big bundle of cables and connected all over his head and neck and shoulders uh, you guys said some things to him he turned around and basically said like what do you want put up a big shield before you could get past um, through to him where, where he's sitting in front of his desk and some of you rolled to see if you knew what type of shield it was and you didn't you're not quite sure if this will just disintegrate you or if it's um you know a very weak shield you're not quite sure but this is where we will pick up back in the hacker's den in dark haven uh may i may I add two things yes that for our listeners that there was so the reason that we wanted to hunt down the this particular gang is because we wanted to help Lokag, is that correct? We wanted to help him retrieve an item. What's a Lokag item? Is that correct? Or if I just misremembered that? No, no, that's right. Um, there's a helmet that steals people's souls and can be used to do dark, nefarious deeds. Correct. The so helmet this... of the undying. That's, that's what I'm Yeah. Thinking. Yes. Uses souls like batteries, is that right? Yeah, Basically, like, like yeah. energizers. Yep, like mm. triple A's. It crosses over with your workings with Ultradie because this drone was an Ultradie drone. They sent you to get it. Yeah, but the... we like asked for um, we asked for like any tasks that would put us at odds, didn't we? So that we could like hunt down this gang while also you know be playing by playing nice with Ultradie. Correct. Yes. So it's kind of two birds with one stone situation. Yes, and then the second thing. All right, yep. listeners, and is that uh, little moss tried to tie up the? I definitely cable tied the people in the other so, room. So yes, when I say tried to, that was sorry, 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 <laughs> little moss. That was disparaging <laughs> and untrue. He confidently, probably the word I would say, tied up the uh, junkheads in the other room. Yes, he did confidently do so. No matter. now standing in front of this thin green force field blocking your entrance into the hacker's den you see this room surrounding you is uh basically like a a normal sort of lounge room there are couches multiple couches sort of pushed to the edges screens sort of on the walls and kind of hanging from their cables it's a little messy in here Then beyond where there would be a bedroom, there is just this blue carpet that has been rolled out and there are stains and stuff on it. And then the big desk set up. Multiple desks all uh, at different heights and on top of them, a multitude of screens and monitors that are piled up touching the roof and angled down so that Anaxet the hacker, this elven hacker who is thin and gaunt can easily look at them all. So he's swiveled on his chair and you see this thin elven man shakingly raising his feeble arms and there are all of these cables connecting into these circular ports all along his arms, along his shoulders, neck and head. He looks very gaunt and malnourished. His skin is this sickly, pallid colour, these dark bags under his eyes. He's wearing this white satin tracksuit pants with these green and red stripes running down its length. And he has on 
these VR goggles. Look, look, look. I don't want any trouble. You don't want this to be any more difficult than it needs to be. You tell me what you want. And I'm absolutely sure that... <clears throat> that we can work out a compromise, a deal. Um, before we answer, Luke, does Spig see anything on the wall where the shield goes into that he could potentially disable if he wanted to? It maybe would take a while to work at it, but... There's like the, uh, the wall would extend all the way across until you would get to like a, uh, you know, a three foot door. Uh, but it's been all cut away. And then on the edges of where this shield or this force field uh, sort of ejects, um, projects from, there are these large sort of um, thick steel beams that have been placed um, next to the structure of the wall and they have emitters running down all the side of them projecting this this green force shield. Um, but but Spigs doesn't think he could disable the shield at all. You can't see a panel or anything on this side. Um, let's see if... Just make a coding check, a slicing check, which is an intelligence check. If you don't have uh, proficiency in it, uh, just make a normal intelligence check for me. Okay. We're on 18 plus 3, so 21. Okay. Because there are no panels no user interface on this side of the room you assume that it is directly engaged with in his AR um, or with his technomancy so this force shield is probably not accessible by anybody but Anaxet um while before the dialogue begins, can I scooch back to the bathroom and see if I can find an old toothbrush or something? Uh, yeah, you can You can definitely do that if you want to move away while he's talking. Yeah. Can I just sort of, like, back out and grab a, a tooth... Is there a toothbrush or can I have a look? Roll a perception check for me. I mean, ooh. <laughs> um, where is my perception color? Uh, nine. Nine. You do find a toothbrush. Just easily, Thanks. nicely sitting there on the counter in there next to the sink. I grab it, I run back in the room, and before his spiel begins... I want to throw the toothbrush at the shield to see what happens. All right. So, just as he finishes off the sentence, and I'm absolutely sure we could <coughs> work out a compromise, a deal. The toothbrush, a toothbrush flies past your ear, Lokag, and <laughs> slams into the force shield. The shield is like this, um, it kind of looks a little bit like an old... Um, the old artifacts you would get on a VCR. So sometimes, you know, you would get that rolling effect where it'd be like this static that rolls down the screen and flickers a little. Mm. It looks like that on the force field. The toothbrush, cool. this blue toothbrush, the bristle bristles are definitely overused as they're sort of curving out and uh, that you can sort of see the bits of grime and stuff on there slams into this force shield. A bunch of this static effect appears where the toothbrush hits. And this, it looks like very transparent lightning cracks from the impact point. The toothbrush falls to the ground and you see it there. Half of it is melted in this pile of blue globby plastic. The, the head of the brush is just poking out of this little pool. Little moss... Does is uh still standing there with his sort of hand pointed forward as if he's just thrown it, and he looks down and exit at the toothbrush, and he looks back up, and he's like, "I don't even know whose that was, but I implore you, don't try anything again. 
Like I said, we can work something out. <clears throat> we can work out a deal. Tell me what you want. Cool. All right, mate. We're looking for a black box from a drone. We, we've we run all around town and we're told that you've got it or information about it. Uh, someone roll an insight check for me. Or a, actually, nah, roll perception. Perception. So I'll roll. Or, uh, 10. You notice he looks to his left. You sort of look in the direction that he quickly looked. And sitting on this silver sort of disc platform on the desk with it has these um these four spider-like legs sticking up out of the silver platform they seem to be holding a black object all of these uh sort of green little lights are flashing on there possibly you describe the object as box it's a trapezohedron with 10 right sides color. Oh, yeah, one of those shapes. A matte black steel. And these tiny blinking little white lights on its surface. There is a a cable Uh. plugged into it that's running up into um, like this large bundle of cables that runs up to the huge bundle of cables on the roof. I uh, elbow low cag in the hip, I presume, if he's that big. Um, (laughs) And I kind of gesture with my head. Psst, psst, look. I look at the thing and memory check. The information is sensitive and we'd rather not have everyone else get a hold of it. Is that correct? Correct. Oi, I reckon that box over there is what we're looking for. Mm, yes. <coughs> he clears his throat. Ah, uh, sorry, it's been a long time since I've talked. Ah, uh, <coughs> with my voice. Well, if you'd kindly clear your throat and stop doing what you're doing with the box, that'd be a great help to us. Yes, okay, well I have people that have paid me for the information inside this black box here. I am happy to part with it while the download is going through. I'm happily able to cancel the download if uh, the right fee comes my way. Like I said... How much is your life worth? (laughs) Oh... (laughs) Well, I'm under the protection of the... You see, because my life is on the line that I need to get that box and keep that information sensitive, so it's worth my life that you don't complete that download. So how much is it worth to you? At, at, that, at that wording, Hortane will draw his sword and activate it. Listen, things don't need to get crazy here. I understand that you've been hired by somebody to steal this and I'm happy to part with it. Absolutely. I don't care much for the Yuntung. But if you break through here and steal it from me, I'm going to destroy the information inside. And then whoever wants that information, whoever's hired you, uh, they don't get it. They don't get it at all. From our perspective, like I know... Getting the information is is certainly the main objective, but would it be enough? Like, would, would it be the worst thing in the world, mission wise? Depends what the briefing was. No yeah. one else gets the information on it. Yeah, like like certainly Ultra Die would be disappointed, but it would be like you know primary objective failed, secondary objective, um, uh, you know fulfilled. If you remember correctly. Ultra Die basically said, by all, um, like, get this information back. Any, at any cost. At any cost. Just don't get caught with it linked to, like, linked to you and linked to Ultra Die. They were basically like, you can kill people, but don't leave an Ultra Die calling card. Don't get caught by cameras. It would basically be mission failed if you lost the data. Okay. They said very sensitive information was on there that could, they need. Could we uh, just kill him anyway? Like, just give him the money. Like we break in, he deletes all the data. He's risking his own life over it. Man, we're backed by a huge corporation. Just give him the cash and move on. How much are you talking about? I like the sound of that. <clears throat> Look, the Yuntang, <clears throat> they're paying me. 
15,000 credits. I'm happy to go for 20, and that's all yours. If we can't get that back, and if you were to delete it, we would kill you. This either ends one of two ways. You give us the data, you give us the black box, and you don't download the information, and you live, or any other any other scenario, you die. You see this shield here? It's connected to a huge ion battery. You know the ones that power <laughs> uh, mech units? One of those. Good luck getting through. I'm happy to make a deal. You can threaten me all you want, but all I have to do is wave my hand and the data is destroyed. And then I've got all the time I want to escape from here. <clears throat> it's simple. We are business people. I work in data. You work in swords and bullets. Uh, if you just say that you can do 20,000 credits, this data is yours. And you don't even have to exchange bullets or blades. <laughs> question like do we uh have we, we there was no discussion with ultra die about about like you know discretionary funds or anything like that for us to use was there um no but it doesn't mean you can't contact them now i'm sure they'd have their their, their ways to send money covertly <laughs> Like, you can contact Hayashida, because he works as, like, a consultant for Ultra Dye. And he's the one who has been able to basically get you your weapons and um, gear from Ultra Dye into the hands of the Swords of Darkhaven without them being traced to Ultra Dye, because they don't want to be seen as funding a vigilante group until it, they're reputable. Mm. So you could probably contact him if you wanted to would and and he's not technically part of ultra guy is he he works as a consultant between any mercenaries or sell swords that the corporation might hire for various jobs because he has the expertise in it but he's not um owned by ultra so there's kind of like One a of the... plausible deniability for him like if correct yeah okay and for Ultra Die. Okay. Because if someone's like, hey, look, Ultra Die gave this guy money and then he gave it to these dudes to pay this guy, Ultra Die can be like, plausible deniability. Like, I didn't receive money. Yeah. Or I received money from somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. That's generally how it works with handlers and between corporations and mercenary groups. Um, like Thundergunk, he would kind of act as that person for you in the past as well. Call him. Yeah, okay. I will not call him. I'll just send him a text, like just a, just a gif. Uh, Give me money. You, well, yeah, like <laughs> can, can can safely secure black box. Need twenty thousand creds. At that stage, I'm going to walk over to you, Cortain, put a massive hand on your shoulder, and go, "Boy, ask if you can get some more. Just extra hush money." Yeah, Plus for 5K. the guy. <laughs> Plus 5k. <laughs> Just shut him up. For, for, for we don't need to guy. hurt him. Hush money. No, no, wait. Dot, dot, dot. 30k and then... <laughs> you see the text where he, he it says scene and then he's responding and those little bubbles come up? Yeah. Those little three dots. They're like <laughs> bouncing. Sure, we can't do 30k. <laughs> Just Just asking for a friend. And he replies, Done. You, you get another notification saying that there have been funds released to your um, your group, your crew, in the amount of 50. Ooh. Strange rate's pretty good. 50k. 50k. Yep. You get another message Ooh. saying, do not lose the data. We have... We have a deal, but you get 10k now... Then you release the Ion Shield. Give us the... Give us the black box. We will ascertain that it is what we are needing. And then we will send you not another 10, but another 15,000 creds for your discretion. He 
puts his hands up and he touches his thumb to his thumb, his index to his index, and he rolls down his hand like he's thinking. <sighs> Done. You see him sort of like close one eye and he touches his forehead and you see behind him all of the screens begin to like flicker. He twitches and then some blood starts to run down his nose and he leans forward. He's lit in that the green light from the shield. Uh, uh, someone's trying to break into my system. Give me one moment. I'm trying to counter them. Uh, uh, I swear this is not a ploy. I'm taking that offer. His screens change to quickly processing blocks of code cast in this neon green light, this black field on the screens. He lifts and he shifts his hand and begins tapping and swiping through the air like an unskilled conductor of an orchestra. He shifts in his seat and he convulses suddenly. Some of the cables around his body and head sort of um, begin to writhe like thin snakes. Take it. The shield comes down. I run in and grab the thing. Is it gentle? Gentle, be careful. It's from a drone and it's been banged up a little. (sighs) He starts to cough. The blood sort of sprays out of his mouth. He reaches out with his, you know, mummified looking hand because he's just that malnourished, pointing towards the black box. Take it now. I've locked it out of my system. Whoever is breaking in the system wants it very, very badly. And if I can't grab the data, I won't let them have it. You take it. I like eye him off and look at the cables and look at his eyes and slowly pull cables out and gently extract it. You unplug the two thin cables that are plugged into the black box. The screens of black codes scatter. It flicks off comes back on and you see this this code this green code very similar to the stuff that you had just seen before he was basically trying to counter hack whoever was trying to break into the system all this green code appears and on all of the screens you see this face a green john lennon face made up of code (laughs) and it has these white glasses which are also made up of co- code and old, odd symbols. And you hear this voice crackle out over what might be speakers in the room. Leave the box and go. The hacker, Anaxet, slumps in his chair a little, blood pouring from his nose. Does he look? He pulls off his goggles and throws them to the floor, and his eyes are bulging and pale. Take the box and go! I think it's time we made an exit. <laughs> go on, Trav. Does he look <laughs> like he's he's dying? Um yeah, possibly. If I roll a medical can I roll a medical check? You can definitely roll a medicine check. Uh that is that is only a three. So before you say yes or no, just it doesn't right. have to be a fail. I could think, you know, that he is dying. He'll be fine. Various cables and tubes running from the multitude of augments on his head and back disconnect with a small hissing sound. His body jerks and his eyes roll back into his head. He screams out loud in a throw of pain. <laughs> All of the ports and connection points on his body start to erupt with blood. Oh. Leave the box. This does not concern you. The voice crackles through the room. So, thinking that he's dead, Cortain just pulls out his revolver and just opens up on all of the computer screens and everything in the room. So, you quickly pull out your uh, revolver and you just start quick-firing it. So, like in the old (laughs) westerns where you would hit on the cock constantly. Bang, 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 bang. Until you have blasted the screens you flick your um, cartridge and you slam another one in all of the screens are flashing some of them go blue then all of the lights in the room flicker off one by one the screens that are not shattered to pieces from your bullets come back on flicker off 
until one central one, half cracked, remains shedding the room in a deep green light. And the pixelated face and round glasses made up of code is the only thing lighting the room. If you take the black box, you will be punished. Shit. Cortain runs. So, um, Cortain begins to run. I pick up the melted toothbrush, I throw it at the screen, and then I run out of the room. All right. Spigs, because you haven't really done anything at the moment, can you roll a perception check as you're just standing there watching all this going on? Oh, not a good number. Um, I'm going to expend two hero dice. That's an extra seven plus five is 12 plus three, 15. 15, all right. um, Anaxet, the elf hacker, falls off of his chair, all of this blood sort of oozing from all the ports and connections and augments all over his body and he raises his hand slightly just for a moment and then his hand drops you see in your um, all of you see in your augmented reality in your heads up display on your goggles glasses helmets watches wherever you have that information any computer system on you you notice that you're getting a notification a file transfer Sender, annex it, file, ni- file name, UD underscore hash 07543A underscore scout drone underscore black box dot zip, partial download, accept oh, yes or no. There's a countdown accepts. for five seconds. Who accepts it? No, I'm too busy running. Anyone else? Cortain does not. Uh, I use burner phones. Um, yes, I accept. All right, so both of you, there is this download going. Um, Cortain, is you were the first one to start moving and Little Moss behind you, Lokeg just slightly after you. You guys hear footsteps coming towards you. And then you hear men speaking in unison along with the crackling voice over the speaker. You have made your choice. You will die. You were warned. Do we recognize the voices? Um... There are these, there are these low sort of droning voices uh, through the walk, the walkways or the uh, the doors, I should say, of the apartments. You see the junk heads. They're all disconnected um, from like from the large cables that were running into their headgear and their heads and augments and stuff, and they're sort of moving, running towards you um, very quickly. And clumsily, like they have no control or regard for their bodies. Uh, Cortain, make a perception check as you're in the front. Is it like Silent Hill? Like World War Z? Yeah, it's it's sort of like kind of creepy. They're not like zombies, but they're like they don't care. Like you see the f- the first one, Cortain. It's running. There's a um like a a, a small cart in the um in the bedroom that has like a all um files and um, some some shoe boxes and just random stuff on there and he just smashes into it not even noticing mm. um, bumping into the wall like um, standing on like standing on a chair and pushing it to the side with his foot as he's like moving but not like actively pushing it aside just with the momentum of his force yeah okay uh, I got a Cortain got a 15 a 15 all right so the first guy you can see on his um, his VR goggles that he has across his uh, his face. There's like a black screen on there. When you guys had first seen them, the screens were just void of anything. Now there is this green code mask with white glasses flickering um, in the center of the screen on the goggles. Fortain just will start slashing. As he's running. All right, I will get all of you to roll initiative for me, please. Um, retroactively, while Cortain yep. was shooting at the screens, I was packing up the black box, like wrapping it up in like anti-static stuff that obviously Anexet had, and I've stashed it, so I'm not holding it in my hands as I grab my weapon and roll initiative. All right, sweet. Nice. Mm. It is packed away. Moss eleven. Yeah, little moss. 11, 14, 12. Ooh, nice. Quick draw. And 14 for Lokag. All right. 
So, um, I don't need that right now. Okay, there are some room events that might happen depending on what happens with all you guys and your um, destructive natures. So, um, room room event is first. What's the what's the room? Uh, what's everyone's passive perception actually? Nine. Yes. Ten plus. Start. Thirteen. Eleven. Fourteen. Okay. Spigs, you notice down from the roof drops um, this small drone. It's basically like a little four-legged spider, uh, but its its abdomen section, its tail, is like a pill-shaped tube. And you have seen these type of tubes before. They are high capacity, very compact. They're used for um, welding and uh, basically cutting, sealing, mending steel um, in very tight areas. It looks like somebody has built this into the drone. Uh, It crawls down from the roof. Its lights were glowing green when you saw it pop out. Sorry, Sorry, were glowing white when you saw it pop out and then they flick to green. It turns down, looks towards you guys. Um, Little Moss, straight ahead. You see the same thing um, pop out of the bathroom out of the ceiling. (coughs) The panel, a panel opens up and this spider-like drone crawls out. Uh, First, in the initiative, we have uh, number two. So we'll actually do that. So, the first junkhead goon charges in. Uh, let's move the drone to here, if I can. Yep. And he charges in towards you, Cortain. And he will swing his katana. He pulls a katana from his um, sort of lower back and swings it in an arc, uh, sort of horizontally. Now, he's five feet away, so the blade doesn't hit you, but this slash of blue-white crackling lightning sort of echoes out of his slashing blade. Um, Where are we? That is a 23-verse AC. Fortunately, I'm not wearing my standard armor, am I? I'm wearing my nin- my ninja covert gear. Correct. Do you have like AC stats for that? Yeah, I do. Um, I, cool. ju- I was just trying to remember, and I'm pretty yeah. I was, I was fairly certain that I wasn't wearing my uh, tank suit. <laughs> <laughs> so that hits. All right. That will. Oops, That will be... Where are you? Oh, an easy two lightning damage as this sort of echo of the blade hits you. Oh, it's only two. Good. Yep. And next after that is Spigs. Alrighty, so... Spigs yells out to Lokag. Uh, just, uh, just give me a minute. Just take care of that drone. I just need to heal up. And Spigs out of the, um, microwave oven canister thing inside of his, his, uh, augmented arm, pops open and puts in, like, a, one of the vials and he sets it, like, he injects it with some stuff in it from his arm some green liquid goes ding and then he injects himself with a syringe <laughs> and he used cast yep. cure wounds level one on himself nice all right which takes up his action he'll probably move though that takes up some action so i'm yep. uh i can move myself can't i he will move oh can no, you i cannot move can you move come on my move speed but i think it's probably to there 
So move just onto the side of Lokag on the opposite side of the drone that came down from the roof. For our listeners. And just, and I'll roll my fingers right. to you in a minute. But keep going. All right. After Spigs, we have uh, the second drone. So, the second drone. Cortain, you look up um, as this thing crawls out of the roof. Oh, no, you didn't actually see it. Sorry. Little Moss did. So, Cortain, you're looking at this junkhead as he slashes out this, this lightning arc ripples out in this sort of uh, boomerang shaped shockwave that slams into your chest not really doing much damage to you then out of nowhere this fiery bolt you see out of the corner corner of your eye flies from the roof in your direction that there is a 16 verse AC that one will miss shield all right this fiery blast this this basically this pinpoint shot of fiery energy slams into the drywall next to you and scorching it you then look up in reaction to see this thing fire at you and it's this six-legged little um arachnid drone on the roof crawling around it will then move over there onto the wall <coughs> uh, next will be Lokag sure thanks Biggs and with that I'm All right. I think we should just run but as I walk towards the drone right in front of me and then take a swing at it how tall are you again uh, big like 8 foot yeah, what's the, okay. what's the height of the ceiling? It's like a, it's probably like a um, fifteen oh. foot ceiling. Can't even touch the roof. Yeah, but you got your hammer. I'm pretty. Sh- oh, pretty it's in the oh, roof, is it? Know. Yeah, no, I can definitely yeah, hit on it roof. on the roof. Splat the rat! Right, cool. Splat the rat! So uh, <laughs> seventeen to a hit, and that will hit the drone, and seven damage. Like squashing moths. Squashing, squashing moths. Moths. Bzz, bzz. Little little moths. Little moths. Yeah, squashing moths. How much? Sorry. Ah, uh, seven damage. All right. Spigs, you slow dog. I'm going to pick you up when I can. <laughs> you better. Can't run. I can't run as fast. Why am I Alright, um Ready when you are. Sorry, it's the type something again. When you, you slam it with your hammer or your uh pole with a big chunk of cement on the end, and it crushes some of its legs, but the thing is still active. Next, we will have Cortain. Okay. So Cortain was just attacked by the junkhead and that drone two is the one that fired at him. Yep. Cool. Um, Cortain is not afraid of fire. What he is afraid of, though, is, 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 is you know, junkhead zombies that have been taken over by some kind of malicious entity. That especially... After having seen that demon who, you know, invaded his own mind, he is having some, you know, some flashbacks. So PTSD. Yes. So with <laughs> um with reckless abandon, he will strike out against the junkhead in front of him with his yep. flaming sword. That is seventeen Verse AC. Are you doing, moving up to him to do it, yeah? Oh, yes. My apologies. Yep, yep, cool. So, 17 verse for, AC for everyone listening at home, I've just run into the bathroom because it's a, you know, it's a linear apartment. Yes. So, yep, I will strike at him. So that hits, did you say? 
does hit. Nice. Okay, that is nine slashing damage and six fire damage. So 15 damage in total. In total. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Does that awesome. does that kill? It does not kill. Okay. Um, oh no! You hit bits of armor that seem to be underneath this guy's jacket. Um, you do not hear him yell out in pain. You just see the um, the symbol on his vi- on his uh, screen across his VR headset flicker um, go to static and then come back to that green face with the white glasses okay with my second attack I will attack this junkhead again yep use it here at us on that very good that is a 19 verse AC that'll hit okay now that is Eight slashing damage and five fire damage. So that's 13 damage in total. All right. He's bleeding and sizzling from your blade attacks, but he's still not downed. Uh, okay. Cortain will use his action surge and attack this guy again. He's just going to just hack and hack and hack. <laughs> All right. So third attack. That is a 25 versus AC. Hits. So that is 11 slashing damage and 8 fire damage. So 19 damage in total. All right. What does it look like when you kill this guy? It's it's not it's not at all pretty. It's just it's 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 just up and down hacking into him like I'm, you know, like I'm cutting wood. <laughs> All right, you split this guy. You start just slamming your blade down into his body as he falls to his knees. You rip your blade free. Blood splatters across the dirty white flooring and the drywall. And he falls to the side. His headset, the screen goes black. All of the augments on his body, they have a slight glowing... um, sort of LED effect to different parts of it they go out as well okay um, I think it is this is more thematic Cortain will use his second attack and he's also not close enough to anyone else um, what do you he, mean second attack that's like your fourth attack or well, second attack of this action <laughs> oh my like cause he will ju- he will use that attack just just butchering just hacking that junkhead two into tiny 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 pieces <laughs> You, wait, you're right. doing this because you were possessed by someone else and this guy was possessed, so you want to murder him too? I'm terrified. It's like, you know, it's... Yep, all right, it doesn't, it's not logical. You know. Yep, PSD. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's terrified. I was, I was possessed by a demon, man. A demon, man? <laughs> and I'm afraid, I'm afraid this is what I would have turned into. You um, have actually, turned into what? it. <laughs> While this conversation's going on, I know it's a meta conversation, but can I get all four of you to roll um, oh, a history check or or a um, slicing check if you have um, proficiency? I thought you meant slicing as in what I'm currently doing to this junkhead. <laughs> uh, I critted 20. <laughs> chong- chomping. You crit 20 mm. on history? Yep. I, I got a ghetto one. <laughs> 15 for speaks. It's unimportant for Cortain. All right. Roll, roll. Well. Um, Little Moss, in your... You haven't spent a lot, like a crazy amount of time in um, New Etica. Um, You know, you're kind of new to some technologies and stuff like that. You had only heard rumor on, and, um, and tales of some of the things uh, from New Etica before coming here. Um, this particular legend, if you want to call it this urban legend, you heard when you arrived in New Etica and you were asking about augments and technology and stuff. And it is not easy. You know this because Gage told you at one point 
It's not easy to hack into people and take control of their augments. It takes an incredible hacker or somebody with some crazy, crazy power. It's actually like a, um, a unicorn. It said that you can't actually do it. You can't take over a person who has sort of uh, cerebral augments mm. or neural links and stuff like that. It's it's basically said to be impossible to do. But this green-faced code hacker person is seemingly doing it to these people. Yeah. Um, this guy, Junkhead2, is a mess. He's basically a pile of sizzling gore at the moment. Uh, next, we have Little Moss. It is your turn, sir. So you heard behind you Lokag swinging his At the hammer and hitting something. Mm. Uh, in front of you, you've seen Cortain Butcher, this this guy running towards you. Yeah. What uh, do you do? Um, That's a good question. I think... I think we need to get out of here. Um, knowing knowing that about the augments and the seeming inability for an external force to control people. Um, and therefore, I don't hold the junkheads accountable for their actions. I, you know, they're being externally controlled. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use my turn to grab Cortain... Um, Try and snap him out of it, and try and pull him out of the hacker den front door, and get it, and try and make an exit through the hallway. All right, so you're going to move from the sort of hackers lounge room area. Yep. Uh, through the five, through the door. Ten feet. Yep. I want to grab Cortain. I want to. I want to. I don't know. I think I'm just going to slap him. Snap out All of right. it, man. Cortain, you feel this grab on your shoulder and then a, like a slap to the face and little muscles there. It's like he's not in control. Like he's not accountable for his actions. Let's get out of here. Is am I in, you know, complete control of, not, not saying being taken over, but am I in complete control of my own mental faculties at the moment? Roll a wisdom check. That is a one. Oh, God. <laughs> no. You're not like a rage barbarian, but you saw this hacker kill another one through cables. You've seen these these guys who generally like that, you know, they're the bodyguards of Anaxet, this hacker. Um, they're addicted to being plugged into the network, to the web. You've seen them come alive in a almost mindless um, thrall-like movement that has pushed them down the apartment towards you. It's you have heard that you know rumors and legends that like. There are there's hackers out there good enough to mind control people uh, as well, um, but there are only tales like a leprechaun and such. I think that because you have you've, you're seeing these people being controlled by some entity that's not here, they're literally taking control of their brains from the network. You are panicking. It's like if you. If you'd seen a unicorn or, or a um, a zombie or a dragon or something, you'd, it's just something unreal that's a, a, a lie that is a, a legend, something silly, a child story that has come to life right in front of you. And I think you're blinded and you're, you instead of flight, you are just fight. You're just like, kill these things and and, we're, and then we'll, we'll get out of here. That's what your mind is set on. So no, little moss pulls on your shoulder, he slaps you. Um, and go from there. 
Um, Little Moss. It seems like Cortain does not want to come Cortain. with you, I'm guessing. Yeah, I do not. You know, I still, I still have enough of my, of, you know, my mental faculties that I, I don't attack, attack Little Moss. Cortain responds. These, these people are possessed. They're, they're now evil. And just like hacking into them. Mm. Alright, little Moss, he's not coming in. You still have a turn. What do you want to do? Um, Alright, well, if he's not going to come, I'm going to try and protect him. Um, so, to my left, do I see the the drone on the wall? Yeah, you saw it pop out of the roof and then move away out of your vision, but now you're there in the bathroom. You can see that it's on the wall. Yeah. It's probably about 10 feet up. Okay. I'm going to um going to try and basically run at it. Um leap at it, grab it and and wrestle it down onto the to to the ground and smash it. All right. So roll your attack. Basketball slam it. <laughs> uh 15. 15? Yeah. That will hit. Okay, so I get to attack twice. Uh, that is 18 damage. All right. You jump off the floor, one foot on the wall, you jump up and you just like volleyball slam this thing into the ground. It hits the ground and then you jump down with it. Um, landing your second strike into the top of this drone, your knee slamming it, slamming it to the ground. Some um, some electricity sort of sparks out of the side of it, and a little burst of flame puffs out of its sort of a cannon-like mouth between its robotic mandibles. Um, but it is not dead, although its legs are compl- completely fucked. Um, it is not looking good. It can't move at the moment yep that's um that's my turn all right now we go to number three chungo junkhead he is one of the named junkheads the um junkie girl called uh locag chungo because she thought she was uh one of um that that, Chung- that Lokag was one of her friends, Chungo, who you guys saw in the first room. He had like a, a vest on, like a sleeveless um, jumper, and he had his name embroidered on there, um, in, on like a military jacket that had the sleeves sort of cut off. Uh, he's big guy, probably about um, similar, he's human, similar height to Little Moss, but not quite as big as Lokag, of course. Uh, and he has like tattoos and stuff on his head. That's why she kind of got confused as well. Does he have any so conspicuous cable ties on him anywhere at all? Just yeah, um, on his uh, left ankle and his left hand, there is a little white cable tie around it. L- little Moss, do you just yell out, "Look, the control has allowed them to break the cable tie." <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be classy and not point it out. <laughs> <laughs> he runs into the doorway. Little Moss Cortain, you see him run in there. Um, he slams into the sort of um, the architrave of the door. He stumbles a bit and he points his head forward, hunching. You see the uh, on his um, headgear, he's wearing this like um, these, these rectangular goggle like things, kind of like a VR helmet uh, with a screen as well. Uh, the symbol of this green mask glows really bright. Uh, and then you see him like fall down to the ground a little bit, and um, how far did he get? Uh, we'll reach Cortine only. Okay, um, Cortine, I will make this. Uh, Twenty versus AC. That hits. This thin green beam appears from his uh, head. Not the headset, but from his actual um, head as he falls. 
uh, like stumbles to the ground and this shockwave it's not a physical shockwave but you feel this shockwave hit you and you take 11 psychic damage as you get these glimpses oh no when you're hit with the shockwave you are on a um like a surgical table this white mattress underneath you this white uh, blanket over your or sheet over your back and you're looking into the reflection on a um, an instrument and now at first you see the junkhead this guy this bald guy with this very small small mohawk these augments on the side of his head, these tribal tattoos around the augments, looking, staring at you. And then it disappears and you see the vision of yourself staring back in at this um, out of this chrome instrument that's sitting next to you, beeping. You feel a scalpel cutting into your spine just ever so slightly. And you see in the reflection these large chem tanks that are running these thin tubes into points on your body and you hear go down rest try to sleep while you go through the surgery chungo rest while you go through the surgery and then you're back in the room and i need you to make a saving throw for me what a kind wisdom saving throw that is a four all right so as you sort of come to your senses, this this green beam that's sort of coming out of this guy's head gets brighter and then disappears. And then in your helmet, all of these ads pop up. Pop, 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 pop. All in the helmet, all across your vision, all these different ads for all different things. Some erotic, some for um, some, some knives that are sharp enough to cut. You already mentioned erotic. Uh, shoes <laughs> and bricks. Uh, there are ones for an Ab Machine 3000. The um, the Forge Drawman Grill. Like all of these ads just <laughs> pile into your vision. And you stumble for a bit. You're blinded until the end of your next turn. Um, and you have this like lingering headache from the psychic damage from that junkhead. Uh, next will be junkhead number one. So he charges through, breaking some of the drywall as he passes by it. Uh, yep. Uh, he will reach under his armpit and he pulls free this large pistol that was in a concealed and he's wearing this VR helmet like it's a full helmet and only his mouth is showing points it towards you uh, because you're the only one that he can see through the alleyway uh, through the hallway and he fires twice bang bang you guys hear the large bangs of this huge hand cannon echoing through the apartments the uh, first one misses completely. The second one will be a 16 to AC. Misses. The round hits your uh, shield. Just as you sort of stumble a little bit from the psychic pain, your combat conditioning, your years of fighting crime, um sort of kicks in and when you feel pain you automatically lift your shield up the, the the bullet impacts into the shield and the round drops to the ground the first bullet uh, because i rolled a natural one hits chungo the junk the junker in front of uh, sorry the junkhead in front of um junkhead one and blasts a nice hole in his side let's see how much damage it does Okay, cool. It passes by his ribs, sending a shower of blood over the ground, 
but Chungo, this junkhead in front of you with the small mohawk, doesn't even bat an eye or flinch. Just blasts a part of his side out, and uh, he is still standing. Next, we will have uh, drone one. So, Lokag, this drone that you have struck with your hammer charges up a large ball of hot energy and it lets free I need Lokag and Spigs to make a dexterity saving throw for me alrighty good oh well I rolled a 10 and a 20 because I've got a Danger sense. I'm going to pick the crit. I think I think that's the wisest choice to do. <laughs> Speed's got 16. 16. All right. You both dodge because you see the this orb of hot energy sort of growing at the front of this drone's um, mandibles. Um, Lokag, you first go to dive backwards and then you realize what it is. So you just drop to the floor. Uh, Spigs, you spin out of the way as it lets out this huge cone blast of flame that uh, first the orb moves away from it and then bursts into that bar blast and sets the rugs on the floor on fire as well and uh, one of the couches that is behind you, Spigs. And the drone... All these lights, the green lights, charge from its um, front to its back. And as I guess the last last one, you hear this pew, this sort of like power down sound. Um, as you saw this orb flashing in its mouth again, that orb goes out. So it did not recharge its, um, its flame burst this round. Next, we have room event. So there are flames now rippling over these rugs that are all over the floor in the the hackers sort of lounge area and one of the couches catches um let us do a quick freehand drawing of everything in the red triangle inside the hackers lounge is burning yeah the door out yeah so yeah, that, that door is is uh, now wreathed in flames. I need um, whoever starts their turn in the fire will take um, will make a save and take damage if they fail it. So first we have Spigs. Yeah. You have started your turn. Please make a dexterity saving throw for me. Oh, it's not good. Dex. Five. Five. All right. So you get burnt by the flames as you start your turn. Uh, that is five fire damage. Uh, and it is, it is your turn. So you can... Yeah, um, just a quick question. How many on the grid we're using? How many places a grid? How many feet? My Five. feet? Nice. Yep. Uh, Spigs is going to do the same thing again. So he grabs a... Uh, can you use the same same syringe in, in the future? I don't know. He's grabbing a, a separate syringe anyway. He chucks it into that container thing, screws it in, pours some liquid, and he injects himself. And uses another yep. cure wounds. So last time I got 10. Would you like to get out of uh, HP? Uh, yep. This time Spigs gets uh, that's 6. Would you like to be out of the oh, fire? Oh yeah, I'm doing that. But, you know, healing first. Okay, cool. Healing cool. first. Where's my spell? Oh no. Uh, spell modifier 6. So sorry, there's actually 9 this time. 9. Alright. Then Spigs will move towards the bathroom and try and get it something. Like one, two, three. All right. Uh, so, sorry, sorry. Um, quick question. There is on the uh, right side, 
Let's see, not towards the bathroom, but on the right side of the wall. There seems to be an opening. Is that a window or what? Uh, where he that? Yes, south southwest, being facing not yeah. east, where the bathroom is. Um, yeah, that that thing that I've drawn a yeah. lot, uh, circle around yeah. that one there. That is a large door that has been basically boarded up with um, some sort of steel material. You don't know how easy it will be get to get off. You don't know how hard it will be to get off unless you make a check. Uh, just just from... Can, I, can Spigs roll like perception or something or figure out whether he thinks it's sturdy enough for low cag to smash down or... Uh, you can roll a mechanical check or a science check because you can basically check to see the engineering of it um, and the or the... Uh, mechanical strength of the metal oh, crit um on yep. mechanical all right um you think that locad could break through it he'll have to hit uh over an 18 on a strength that. dc hey locad can you get an over 18 on strength check <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah let, wait let me check my stats <laughs> 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 Let me open up the cabinet. Okay. Key. Maybe can you break down this door? I don't think too slow. Or just pick me up. Either one. Or... Also, I'm on and fire. Is that the end of your turn? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next is the drone two. So the one little moss is. Uh, sort of plunging his knee on top of and holding down. Uh, it is going to burst its flame charge towards Little Moss and Cortain. So I'm going to need both of you to roll a uh, dexterity saving throw. Uh, that is eight, Cortain. Uh, 15 for Little Moss. Little Moss, you succeed. Cortain, uh, you do not, as the flames burst out of it. I hold it like an extension of my own crotch. So you... uh, (laughs) Little Moss spins behind it, holding it at his crotch, and the flames burst out (laughs) hitting you, Cortain. You take 14 fire damage. Thankfully, I am blind, so I cannot see the fire <laughs> gushing out of out of Little Moss's nether nether regions. And uh, the wall catches a little bit on fire. Just, uh, the floor is also um, have some flame in it, um, so that is like going to be a dangerous zone now. So when you start your turn, you're going to have to roll another deck save for me, um, and. The creature cannot move. That is the end of its turn. Next is Lokag. You're in the flames. Roll the dexterity saving throw for me, sir. 13. 13. And that is a pass. You dance um, around the fire. And as I do so, the lights on my um, back augment start glowing because I've actually remembered to ignite my rage. (laughs) <laughs> and then I charge forward to the door that Spigs pointed out that apparently needs a magical 18 number of strength to break. And I'm going to use my Warhammer as a strength check on the door. Because I'm raged. Nice. Oh, advantage. Nice. Oh. Um, 23. Is that better than 18? I'm not very intelligent. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> So, we see the hallway outside the apartment. We hear some gunshots. We hear some slight whistling of fire. And then the door bursts out. It slams against the opposite side of the hallway, sending drywall plaster flying all over the place. The door then falls 
with a massive crash sound to the ground and Lokag is standing in the doorway, flames licking behind him as he stares down the camera. Doors open, Spigs. Good, good job. All right. Did you want to move out, Lokag, or did you want to stay? I don't think I've got any more movement mathematically. Minor move action. I... Nah. Uh, like, if you allow me... Sh you you can be standing right in the doorway, sure. basically, when you smash through it. Um, next is Cortain. Okay, Cortain is blind. He needs to take a uh, check for dexterity, you say? Yes, because he's in the flames. That is a uh, 16. A 16. Nice. Even though he, okay. he is blind. I rolled with disadvantage. Beautiful. I was just about to ask, but then you rolled twice anyway, so I was guessing that you did. Um, you don't need your eyes to feel the flames. <laughs> uh, so you basically... That's, that's deep. That's... You move, you guide your body. This body that you have painstakingly built into being a fighting machine a warrior a street fighter you have felt the flames lick towards you in certain areas and you have moved out of the out of the, the small puddles of flame that sit there uh, what do you what are you to do now I call out little boss I'm blind oh now you want my help <laughs> Um, do you want to move? Um, or are you going to stay in the flame in the flamey area? Because you, you can feel there are flames around you. You just don't know how far it goes. So, uh, Cortain will... Go backwards. Listen to his friend Little Moss. Slowly move 10 feet backwards. Until with his shield, with his shield up. Just like slowly moving backwards. Yep. And then he runs in, like he backs up into Spigs. <laughs> All right. And does Spigs you know, res respond? Oh. Keep, keep away from the fire. No. Okay, recognizing the sound of. Spigs, he will not turn around with his sword. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason you are. Nice. Cortain will just stay where he's just, I can't see! That's all he says, and he just holds up his, his shield. All right, next we have Little Moss. All right, I'm in the bathroom, right? And flame yeah. blocking the door. Uh, is there You're not in the flames but you can um, you'll have to go through them to get out is there a shower uh, there is a shower it is over here you're playing the long game gonna have a shower while we're fighting for our lives <laughs> I'm just like I wonder if I can go and turn it on and I don't know like like kick the taps off the wall and start to like Flood some water into the room to abate the flames long enough for me to dive through the door. Just wet yourself and then run through them. I don't want to piss myself. And a toilet. Yeah. Um. Can and I? The sink. There's a sink there. Yeah. Can I just kick the sink off the, the 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 sink taps off the wall and then flood the room? Yep. Uh. Roll a roll an attack. 16 16 you burst the uh, the tap um, handle off and water starts to just spray out of the the cold tap does it put the yeah. fire out yeah does it it will put it puts the fire out in the 10 feet square in front of you Okay, can I... 
can I like you know when you get a hose and you put your like thumb over it to like make it go <laughs> in a certain direction? Can I? Yeah. Can I direct it towards the door a little bit? Yeah, roll dexterity. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Now, just for fun, I want to pick up the drone and face it towards Chungo Junkhead in the door. Yep. Uh, and right. then you pick you pick up the drone, but that's probably all you can do now because you've done two. You've done a. Oh, a I've already check done. Uh, okay. All right. Now I'm yeah, going to use so the rest. Just run out the room. All right. Are you still holding the drone, or are you going to leave it? Uh, I'll take it with me. Take it with you? Yeah. Good. You have drone. Uh, one, two, three, four. You can probably make it to there, I think. Done. Yeah, and the drone's... Where's the drone facing? Towards us or towards not us? <laughs> it's towards low cag. Oh, thanks. you got to get <laughs> over speaks his shoulder it. towards me. I'm facing it towards Chungo dickhead or whatever his name is alright and it is Chungo Junkhead's turn stumbling moving through the room he slips in the bloody corpse (laughs) he um, moves by the fire he points his head towards you little moss arching his back and green beam sort of emanates from him. That's 20 versus AC. Hits. That's 12 psychic damage. Oh. And you must make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. I am very wise. I warn you. 15 versus, well, him. 15. Cool. So, this shockwave once again, emanates from Chungo Junkhead. It hits you, but you can't see this shockwave. You just feel it push against you like a like an incredible gust of wind, but it doesn't like move your clothes. It's something else, it's some sort of some type of other force. It hits you, ripples up your body, and you feel this sharp pain in your mind. And you're sitting on the street. You look to your right and you see New Etika, Darkhaven. And you see these tall people, these tall elves, these tall humans, massive half orc that goes by. This big taxi car speeds by, and as you watch it speed by, you look to the left, and you're sitting on the old streets near the monastery. the overgrown walls nearby these thick vines and luscious growths crawling up the stonework and you look across at an old sign advertising something illegible you can't really read it then you look back down the street and you see a motorbike running off the road coming towards you you jump back but you see the tyre coming towards your face the front of this front wheel of the motorbike everything goes black and then you're back in the room again holding the drone as the junkhead Chungo is holding his head and looking up towards you He doesn't continue any further. That's the end of his turn. Junkhead one runs up. One, two, four, five. And he will point his pistol and click it again twice, pulling the trigger. Uh, one is a fail. And one is a... Where are you? Where are you? 22 versus AC. Little, uh, sorry, yeah, little moss. Ah, uh, that one misses. Nah, it hits. <laughs> okay. 
firing twice. Bang, bang. The first one is a is a miss. It flies past you after you hear it crack into a screen behind you. And the second one slams into you doing nine piercing or nine ballistic damage. That's the end of his turn. So, room event. Chungo, the junker in front of you, the junkhead in front of you, he rips off his VR goggles, dropping them to the ground. His eyes are burning, like sizzling in his skull, and he's screaming. And you hear him yell out, You won't have me any longer! You won't! As he falls to the ground. Sorry. <coughs> As he falls to the ground, his eyes still bubbling and sizzling. The connectors in his uh, cybernetic augments, in his eyes, ocular augments, they're bleeding like the corners of his eyes. He falls to his knees, looking towards you, Cortain. And he says, I'm so, I'm sorry. Oh, what a champion. His hand falls to the ground. And the VR goggles and all the augments on the side of his head and on his body go from that green light. Blank. Um, Spigs, roll a dexterity saving throw for me. Of course. Uh, probably just, yeah, even is worse than before. Probably four. All right. Oops, wrong document. I'm going to get a Chungo tattoo. Never forget. <laughs> <laughs> Chungo! That is six fire damage. All right, Spigs is going to chicken leg it. All right, out the yep. door. One. I'm assuming I can. Can I move? I can't. Can I move past? Okay, is he in the doorway? Yeah, magical. Yeah, you can move. You can move past. I suck my stomach in. <gasps> I'll just go under your. I'll just go under <laughs> your legs. <laughs> in between your legs. Two. Three. Looks like you laid a chicken. <laughs> alright you are out of the fire out of the apartment out into the blue teal coloured hallway uh, on the floor that you're standing on the large heavy door that Lokag burst off its hinges you hear fire rippling in the room behind you anything else? Uh, I don't know where our direction is um, that we need to escape to this is where you came from. Okay, so where the elevators were to the west. Are we? Oh, so we're like really high up in the apartment block, aren't we? Don't yeah. take the elevators. This guy's a hacker. Yeah, is there any? Does big spots any like emergency stairwell or anything? You certainly do. There are stairwell right here. This oops. This constitutes an emergency. <laughs> so Spigs will <laughs> leg it. <coughs> you can only move 15 feet or are you going to double, double move? You don't have any legs. Okay, he dashes towards the emergency exit. And next we have uh, Drone 2, which is the one in uh, Little Boss's hand. I face it towards the, the um, bathroom doorway. All right. It is going to just fire. And it misses. It shoots one of its fire bolts down the hall. <sighs> Junkhead doesn't dodge it or anything. The thing just slightly misses his uh, large VR helmet. It flies down the hallway and slams against the wall a few apartments down. Skewering a succulent. 
And that is the end of its turn. And now it will be Lokag. All right. So my plan is to get close to Cortain, pick him up, and then move again and leave. Is that legal? Pick him up. Carrying him? Yeah. Picking, picking me up be, against, you'll be against Cortain's will is probably a No, no, no. But uh, mathematically, like a... <laughs> hang on. Like, with the, with the rules, can I do that? You'll be half speed. Oh, but I can carry an entire ton. I'm not wearing my armor. But I can carry That's a ton. True. All right. All right. You can pick him up and not move half speed, but... Uh, you'll have to use a strength check to pick him up and it will be a contest between you because I don't know if Cortain wants to be All right, well, I'm, I'm going to have to walk through some fire to get there, but Cortain, I'm going to pick you up and get you out of here. You are right? As I uh, say Cor- that... <laughs> As Cortain considers... Cortain rolled an 18 for his wisdom. Him being badly wounded will not fight Lokag. <laughs> well, you're just emotionally like, I'm not a bad <laughs> Like, this is my choice to be carried. Yeah. All right, Lokag, you go through, you pick him up, and you take him out. How far are you um, I can move four squares on the map, 40 feet. I can move a lot further than Spigs. I go as far as I can to the door that is emergency. Catch you, boss. See you around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cortain, it is your turn. All of the ads flicker off off your, uh, off your helmet. You've been carried by Lokag in the hallway. Outside the apartments, the the gentle no rocking fire. puts him to sleep. <laughs> you see the uh, emergency exit on your left. Okay, so I have my vision back. That's what you were. You do. Low keg, I can. I, I'm okay now. I can see. I can. I can walk myself. All good, mate. Thank you. Glad Lokeg. to help. And then Cortain will. Just you know, walk, you know, make make his way to the emergency exit. All right. Oh, actually, he looks around and he notices that little moss is not there. He calls out, "Little moss!" Yes. Are you okay? I don't. Yes. Oh, yeah, he said he was okay. <laughs> All right, next is Little Moss. All right, so I throw the drone into the bathroom at the junkhead. Yep, easily done. And then I I barrel dive through the flames out the door in a somersault motion. And then... All right. And do I have to do a save of some Um, description? No, that thing's only wasn't really supposed to go through that square. Um, oh, okay. So you don't have to make a save. That's fine. You didn't start your turn in it. Oh, I still want to do a cool like somersault barrel roll, so easy because you have to get through the flames somehow. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. Uh, you and- leap over the flames, going into a tuck roll, and then um, somersaulting, landing on your feet in the hallway. And then I leg it after the other guys. Oh, you go through. Yep. Um, you can get there. So you you all run past Spigs and he was the first to exit the room. <laughs> okay, so you guys head down the hall into the emergency exit stairwell. You all run down the a massive flight of stairs. The building alarm starts to go off after you're about four levels down, saying that there's a fire and that um, emergency crews will be on that level soon. You are making your way down out into the street of Darkhaven, looking up at the apartment, (coughs) this huge apartment above you. And you see 
the north side of the building. Um, sorry, no, not the north side. The north side is backed against another building. You see the east side of the building because this apartment is right on the edge. So in the uh, first apartment, the junk headroom, um, the bathroom was letting some light in through some windows there. Now you see flame, furious, angry flames ripping out of that window. So you can only assume that those three apartments, maybe more, the hallway possibly, has caught and is burning. And you hear sirens. Some fire trucks. Some emergency rescue trucks. Speed down the street and park in front of the apartment building and all of these firemen get out in their flame shield armor. This bright yellow. They start running into the building. One of them is down the bottom on this uh, large chair on top of the machine. He starts to be swiping, tapping buttons. And you see the distinctive glow of Augment. All of these drones disconnect from all of the fire trucks and rescue trucks and start to fly up in the air. And he's controlling them all. And they start spraying water into the window. Some of them fly in to look for survivors. And you guys exit this street, this alleyway back towards Ultra Die Tower. And you see the large monolithic structure that you've become familiar with. You walk into the lobby. The security guards know who you are. They take you to the private elevator and you all step in. And that is where we'll leave this episode. Nice, tight, cool beans. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for listening. Just leave it on that loop. Eating all my sandwiches. Thanks, Thanks, bro. Nah, thanks for downloading. Thanks for listening. Thank you for eating all my sandwiches, Travis. I hope they got to you uh, in a decent amount of time. I, you know, I sent you that assortment. I don't know what they look like after about, what was it, three weeks of um, postage? Yeah. I think anyway. They would have been COVID safe by then. <laughs> yeah, they were. They had, they quarantined. Mm. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening and downloading the show. Um, it's awesome that you guys are doing so. I know that at the moment with um, less commute for most people, that it's uh, hard to listen to the favorite, all your favorite shows. So if you're taking your time to listen to ours, I thank you very much. If you want to listen to ours and find some more of our stuff, you can check out our website, which is at www.beyondthedice.com. I haven't checked it out recently, but it turns out we've got like a YouTube and there's like things that we've posted. It's mostly just audio stuff and whatnot, but like there's probably other surprising things that I'm not aware of and you can find out and tell us about and give us some reviews. Yo, 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 check out our Instagram at Beyond the Dice. We're not that cool, though. Maybe we are, it's a different verse. But we take all the nerdy stuff in that place. Also, if you're on Facebook, go out and check out Beyond the Dice, where you can get all the latest news and releases of the episodes. And uh, it'd be really helpful uh, to spread the good word of, of Beyond the Dice and Uetica if you could leave us a review on um apple on the apple store or just follow us on whatever whatever um method you use to listen to your delicious podcasts and if you would like to uh support the show you can head on head on over to store.beyondthedice.com now if you can't afford any of the sweet merch on there i totally understand um you can support the show for free by telling a friend or sharing a link on social media or Kidnapping somebody, putting headphones on them while they're in your basement and playing the show to them. You can do that. I'm not telling you you should. It's illegal and horrible to do to somebody, but you, you can. If you want to, you could do that. Um, uh, on the our store, we ha- have a whole bunch of new merchandise that's gone up recently. Um, there are masks. So if you in your state or country or wherever you are that you have to wear a mask when you go out in public, we have Beyond the Dice masks. Uh, we also have um, not podcast-related merchandise. So there are other 
sort of RPG and D&D related stuff. But it's not Wizards of the Coast D&D or D&D branded because we would be sued to the bone or more. To the marrow. What's inside marrow? To the cellular level. They would sue us. Anyway, um, thanks, guys. And uh, um, stay safe out there. Don't get sued. All COVID. See you. Sleep well. See you all. Bye. Bye.